welcome ladies and gentlemen again to our green room matters we are ever excited and always looking forward to present and uh, to always offer our viewers a very very um a deep teaching and discussion on any subject matter because we we, we take it seriously that there's someone whose life is about to be transformed and so every single minute that we put in our, our, our programs is very valid and very essential. And so all of you that are joining us, we say welcome. Please go ahead and make a watch party. Invite someone again. I have an interesting, interesting um, topic that we are looking at today. An interesting topic with an interesting speaker or interesting guest. So get ready. We are about to take off. Our discussion today centers um, on the topic um, that is the marketplace. We are going to really understand what the marketplace is and how, as believers, we can get involved in the marketplace and how we can be, let me put it this way, how we can minister uh, before the Lord in the marketplace. And so... This is very important for us to understand, to explain this in details, and to shed more light on our discussion tonight. I have again, on our discussion, on this program, a dear, dear friend, brother, man of God, uh, a great man of God for that matter, Dr. David Kaluba. You, you remember he blessed us a while ago, um, and uh, I have a privilege to have him again on the program tonight. Dr. David Kaluba, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you again for sharing or spending uh, some time with us on the program. Yes, sir. Of course, um, he is the founder and president um, of the Elohim um, Church Global, and um, he's, he's, uh, he's uh, doing tremendously well and uh, he's also a man who is in the marketplace so it's going to really really help us to to get to the details of what we're talking about so pastor david yes sir to begin with um will you please just define what mm -hmm. um we mean when we say the marketplace the marketplace, that's a, an interesting word, uh, because obviously when we talk about market, when we talk about place, uh, we're talking about a place where we do business. Right. So uh, the marketplace is anywhere where you do your thing. Right. That's the simplest way I can say Great. it. In other words, if you are a teacher, your marketplace is a classroom right. and the school. Right. Uh, if you are into hospitality, mm. your marketplace might be a hotel or a restaurant or whatever it is that you do, customer service. Uh, if you're a pastor, mm. your marketplace is the church mm. and the body of Christ, the community mm. where you minister. Right. So the marketplace is essentially anywhere where you uh, do your craft right. uh, or where, where where you save your purpose in the earth. Mm. Uh, that is your marketplace. Amen. Um, yes, sir. Amen. So can we rightly say that mm. uh, one can be called into the marketplace? Because yes. that's where you are discharging your calling and uh, you're fulfilling God's uh, purpose for your life. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Because uh, I believe that the church, unless you are called into ministry, mm. which makes the church your primary marketplace, mm. uh, the church is not primarily the marketplace for anybody who is not called to ministry. Mm. The church is the place of equipping right. for the marketplace. For the marketplace. Yes. So we are to be equipped in the church mm. so we can produce in the marketplace Amen. and have an impact in the marketplace. Praise God. Uh, not that the church is the end product. Mm. This is just, it's just training. Mm. That is why it's Sunday. We are a church. If you have a midweek service, you include a Wednesday, whatever, but the rest of the time, mm. you're in the marketplace. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, over 80%, according to statistics, over 80% of people everywhere spend uh, more than 70% of their time in the marketplace. Mm. And mm. that includes both Christians and non-Christians. Right. You want to find Christians? Go to the marketplace. Mm. You want to find non-Christians? 
go to the marketplace. Mm. So it is a very exciting place. Amen. And more importantly, it is the marketplace that funds the whole world, Praise including God. the church. Praise God. Yes. We're going to come to that. Yes, sir. We're going to come to that. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Bish, um, uh, Dr. David. Yes, sir. Are we Christians effective in the marketplace? Mm. Do you think... Um, or how effective are we? Because mm. if we spend 70% of our time in the market, yes. mm -hmm. then let's talk about our effectiveness. Yes, because that's a good question. Because when you look, when you look at the marketplace in comparison to church, mm. I mean, how long is a church service? Two uh, hours. Two hours in the COVID times, maybe even less. One hour. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then even if you include a midweek service, an hour, two hours. Mm. So you're talking a maximum of five hours mm. of church time. Mm. But how long do people spend at work? Mm. You're talking about eight hours. Eight hours. A shift day. at least. Mm. Multiply that by five days. 40, 40 hours, hours compared to five hours. Wow. So uh, if we're going to be really effective, it is not in the five hours at church. Mm. It is in the 40, 40 hours, hours at work. Amen. And some of you watching us probably spend more than 40 hours at work, actually. Because yes. you do overtime and you stay over until you finish. You spend 50, 60 hours at work, but you spend five hours in church. Mm. So you can be effective at church, but you're, most of the time our effectiveness at church is actually Two believers. Two Most believers, of the people yes. at church are actually already saved. Mm. The majority of the people that actually need to be reached are in the marketplace. Well, we spend 40 hours minimum or so. Wow. Uh, yes, sir. Wow. wow. That's very, very interesting. Food for thought. Food yes, for sir. thought. Yes. <laughs> and uh, very, very scary at the same time. Yes, sir. Because to us, church mm -hmm. is what we think is the time for God. That's right. We are forgetting that, mm -hmm. including your eight hours in the marketplace. Yes. The Lord's. Absolutely. Is the Lord's. And uh, in fact, we can say mm -hmm. that is your church, the marketplace. It is. That's your pulpit. <laughs> That's your pulpit. <laughs> and whatever you do, you do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Even when you're at work. Amen. Yes, sir. Um, let's talk about now, how do we excel mm -hmm. in ministry yes. and in the marketplace. Right. So in other words, uh, Christian entrepreneurs. Exactly. Or, no, I think we are, just, okay. we are, I think we are now limiting it now to Christians. How can Christians okay. now be effective and excel? Yes. In sir. fact, let me maybe narrow it a little down before we get to the business. Okay. Per se, yes. Sir. Just in general, the marketplace, like those who are in teaching and mm -hmm. those who are in uh, health and stuff like that. Yes, sir. How do we bring the effectiveness in the marketplace? So when we look at the life of Christ, man, guys, yes. best example. Uh, if you read the Bible, which obviously the, uh, the New Testament books were written uh, way after the death of Christ. He read the Old Testament right. and the Old Covenant. So he, he didn't go around preaching mm. most of the time. Yes. Uh, he taught, he preached, and he healed the sick. Mm. However, most of what is written, even though he preached many sermons, if you pick up the Bible, man, you find that there are only a few sermons of Christ in there. Yes. The longest being the, uh, the Olivet Sermon, the Sermon on the Mountain, where he, he taught for a long time that you find at the beginning mm. uh, of Matthew uh, 5 or somewhere there. But most of what is written is just his lifestyle. Mm. Mm. And so this is where now the marketplace becomes very interesting. Right. We are not necessarily there to Bible bash people, mm. but it's the lifestyle, the lifestyle of a believer in the marketplace. Wonderful. That is what's going to make people say, oh, that is that person is different. Mm. That lady is different. Mm. You know, even the word Christianity, how it was first coined, it was because uh, they behaved like Christ. Mm. In the normal world, normal marketplace, they acted like Christ. Like Christ. They spoke like Christ. Mm. So people started calling them Christians. Christianity right. was not even coined by, by religious men, mm. no, by men of faith. It wasn't mm. the apostles who called themselves Christian. So we are Christians, but we didn't even start Christianity. Yes. It was the world who started Christianity. Right. Because the world began to call people 
Christians, Amen. believers. Amen. And how did and why did they call them Christians? Because of the way they treated themselves in the marketplace. So they said, these must be Christians. They are like that dude whom we crucified. Right. So that's how the whole thing started. Wonderful. So when we talk about somebody who's in healthcare mm. or somebody who's teaching, mm. I just gave that as a background to answer this question yes. in the sense that, so if I'm in banking, mm. uh, I used to be a corporate banker myself. That mm. was my last proper job. Right. Uh, before I decided not to have a job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you have a, uh, in, the, in the marketplace like that, it's about your lifestyle. Mm. How you conduct yourself mm. in that environment will either have people say, she is different. Mm. There's something about him. Right. Or when you try to open your mouth and invite them to church, they just say, you, church, <laughs> whatever. So it's about how you treat yourself. Right. Marketplace. Man of God, um, other than yes, for the purpose of uh, sharing the love of God okay, in the marketplace, good. yes, sir. one of the major reasons mm-hmm. why we are found in those environments yes, sir. it's for economic reasons. That's true. That's like true. you rightly put that, yes, it sir. is the marketplace that runs the world mm-hmm. financially. Uh, absolutely. It is also the marketplace that runs the church. Yes, sir. So now let's narrow our mm-hmm. discussion to yes, money in the market money in the marketplace that's good then um i want to say that yes, the success of any organization mm-hmm. be it christian organization yes sir. or a secular organization i think largely depends on the on its financial position that is true yeah having said that mm-hmm. I want you to maybe just uh, before we get now into details of the marketplace yes, would you sir kindly emphasize Mm -hmm. um, the importance of money in the kingdom. Okay. That is important. That's very good. Um, The gospel, I think we had this chat earlier. The gospel is free. Yes, sir. But it is not cheap. It's not cheap. Uh, Just like salvation, uh, the the, the death of Christ uh, is a free gift from God, Mm. but it wasn't cheap. Mm. It cost Jesus Everything. Everything, yes. Uh, So uh, when we talk about the church and how that we preach the gospel and it is free, Mm. it's still not. It's not cheap. It's not cheap, yes. So the Bible says, how shall they hear the word mm. unless somebody preaches to them? Yes. How shall they preach unless they are sent? Yes. You know, how shall yes. they be sent unless somebody actually sponsors them? Exactly. That's essentially what the Bible is saying. Yes. So while the gospel is free and uh, we ought not to charge for it, for the church to function, it needs to have a financial best. Right. And the people whom God has entrusted to find his work are the people whom God has called to that work. Mm. And so that is why it's a, co- it's a, co- a cooperative, uh, it's a joint venture, if you like, yes. where uh, many people that God has called to put, put together, get together and put their resources together. Uh, David uh, wants to build a house for the Lord. Yes. And uh, God says to him, you, you share so much blood, my son, mm. I'm going to let your son do it. Yes. Um, notice what happened. Resources. They needed timber. They yes. needed, and not just timber, the very finest. Mm. And so they began to bring offerings to the house of the Lord. Yes. They brought so much offering that the man of God had to say, no more offering, please. It's enough. Yeah, that's enough that you brought to the house of the Lord. But they were doing that to speak. Sponsor the kingdom of God, to mm. sponsor the work of God. Does that mean God can supernaturally sponsor his church? Of course he can. Yes. But he has given dominion, dominion over the earth to mankind. Right. That means we are the one who are well, empowered to sponsor the kingdom of God. Yes. So that means God will bring money to the church, but not directly from heaven. Mm. He's going to do it through people. Right. We are the conduits. Mm. We are the uh, pipelines. We are God's distribution center in the earth, which is how mm. I like to say. I am God's distribution center Ooh. in the earth. And because I'm God's distribution center in the earth, I will never go without. Mm. Because how is God going to distribute through me if I'm empty? Yes. yes. That means God has no choice but to prosper me because mm. I have positioned myself mm. to sponsor the church. So the church... Uh, I'll say this very candidly and honestly. Almost any church out there, any church is only as strong as its faithful tithers and givers. Full stop. Right. 
Doesn't matter how much anointing you have in your church mm. or how many times you can pray. Your church is only as strong as the number of tithers and givers that you have in your church, especially tithers. Amen. Uh, because giving Amen. is free. It's a choice. Amen. Well, as tithing is not supposed to be a choice. Yes. But some believers have chosen to make it a choice. <laughs> a choice. In fact, can I, can I have Please. permission to yes, talk yes, about yes. tithing a little Please, bit? Go Mother ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when you talk about the tithe, a lot of Christians have used the gospel of grace. I am one of the biggest preachers of the gospel of grace. I know. And I can tell you right now yes. that the tithe doesn't feature in the gospel of grace. It is not a part of it. Mm. Okay, because uh, when was the tithe instituted? Before the law was Before given. the law. The gospel of grace is that we no longer live by the law, we live by grace. Yes. But if you notice how God brought in the tithe, it was way before the law was introduced. In fact, let me show you how far back. It's so far back. Abraham. Yes. Meets Melchizedek, mm. King of Salem. Mm. There's, an, there's an exciting story about King of Salem. Yes. The city where uh, Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac, yes. that city was called Salem. Mm. That was the city where Melchizedek came from, mm. where Isaac was about to be slaughtered. It was in that place that Jehovah Jireh was introduced to Abraham. Wow. Because he was about to crucify his son. Then he says, no, look up, there's a ram caught in a thicket. Yes. Rams cannot climb high. So the only way a ram can be caught in a thicket, it had to have fallen from above. Mm. So it was provisioned from heaven. Right. That fell. Then he got caught wow. in there. And then he goes and kills it. In that moment, God reveals himself as Jehovah Jireh. And the name of the place begins, uh, is no longer called Salem. Because uh, it was called Salem at the moment. If you read in Hebrews, the yes, king of Salem. Yes. It now begins to be called Jireh Salem. Jehovah Jireh Salem. Salem is peace, which is like Shalom. Jireh, my provider. My provider, my God of peace. So it was now called Jireh Salem, which is now being abbreviated to Jerusalem, mm. which is the city of our mm. God. Mm. But in that moment, he meets the king of Salem. Right. And because he recognizes that he carries the spirit of the Christ to come like Christ incarnate, he offers a tithe to him. Right. This is Abraham. Yes. Then Abraham lives long. I don't know how many years. Don't quote me. I don't know. He lives very long. I know he was an old man when he died. <laughs> don't know his birthday when he died. But then he gets Isaac. Isaac also lives very long. Mm. Then he gets Jacob. Jacob lives many years. Okay. And then after Jacob lives many years, he has 12 sons. Right. Joseph is one of them. Yes. Joseph goes to Egypt, yes. becomes prime minister. And then he dies. 400 more years later, Moses is born. And then Moses receives the law. Then the law is given. In fact, Moses the has lived over 40 years before he, he received Exactly. The law. And, and so, which means the tithe came way, way ago, maybe a thousand years ago. Right. It has nothing to do with the law. Mm. But today's believers say, oh, we no longer live under the law. We live by grace. We don't need to tithe. But the law, the tithe was given a thousand years before the law was ever given. That's good. It's a question of the heart. <laughs> And it's a question of value, man of God. Mm. In fact, but we can't talk about this issue without talking about value. If we right. talk about sponsoring the church, because I might get passionate about it. Um, why do you give the supermarket the money you give them for the sugar? Mm. Because you believe they're giving you value in yes. the sugar. Yes. Why do you pay for the car that you drive? Mm. You believed that the money you gave them, they gave you back value. Why do people have a problem giving in the church? They don't value what they're getting. Come at on. It is a question of value. If you value God's kingdom and what God's kingdom does for you, you have no problem tithing or giving. Nobody needs to chase you. If you come to Elohim, man of God, you, you probably already know this already. We don't force anybody. We yes. don't go on about it. We trust you to do the right thing. If you value what God is doing in his kingdom, you will place where the heart is. There are your, where, is it where your treasure where is? Treasure your heart is, is. That's right. yes. Where your treasure is, there your heart, heart will be. If you want to know what somebody, uh, where, where somebody's heart is, just check where they spend their money. Wow. If you want to know, ladies, if you want to know, mm -hmm, sorry, brothers, yeah. if you want to know if, he, uh, if his heart is with you, just check if he does once in a while spend on you. Mm. If he doesn't, his heart is not there because where, where your treasure is, there your, your heart, heart will be. Goodness. So the people that fail or have a, a problem bringing into the house of the Lord, they, their treasure is not in church. Their heart, rather, is not in church. So they, they, they find it difficult to bring their treasure to church. Mm. It's that simple. It's a, it's a it's a, it's a heart matter. 
Amen. Yes, sir. One of the reasons why God blesses his people yes, sir. Uh, individually mm. is the, uh, for the purpose that they may bring in the house of God. Absolutely. Uh, because if God is going to fund his church or his kingdom, that's right. it's going to be through people. Like you said, God does not do anything here on earth except through his through people. people exactly. So the reason why God wants to prosper me mm-hmm. is that then I can become... Um, a, a fund, if I can use that word, or yes, a sir. contributor yes, sir. to the kingdom of God. Absolutely. Now, having said that, yes, then the individual, mm-hmm. individual accumulation of wealth or individual prosperity is yes. very cardinal mm. to the kingdom of God. Absolutely. Um, where we have members, or let me say citizens of a kingdom who are poor, yes, it shows that the kingdom is poor. Very poor, yes. Because the church receives from what individual members have got. Absolutely. So that Absolutely. is the reason why God wants us to be blessed and to be prosperous. Absolutely. And that is why yes, God releases us into the marketplace. Yes, sir. Now, when we mm-hmm. go in the marketplace, mm-hmm. what attitude should we have? That's a good one. Uh, if you look at David, yes, sir. David is a good example for the marketplace. I mean, there are many examples I can use. I'm just being biased because of my name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we could use Jacob. Uh, we could use uh, Joseph because he was in the marketplace. He yes. was a politician. He was a prime minister. Yes. Uh, he was an administrator. Mm. And, uh, and he was uh, working in a place where he was in marketplace, mm. but with the blessing of the Lord on him. Uh, same thing with Daniel. There are many examples. Yes. Daniel was an administrator for the king. He was in the marketplace, mm-hmm. but his faith was recognized in yes. the marketplace. Um, and so the same thing with Jacob. Mm. His uncle recognized there's something about him in the marketplace. He was the general manager of Laban's company. Mm-hmm. So that's again in the marketplace. Uh, but if I can use the David example, David, uh, you probably, um, I mean, the Bible says in actually uh, in the book of Acts, actually, it talks about how that uh, he, he, Acts 13, verse 36, David saved. God in his generation, and he saved his purpose in his generation. And after he had finished his purpose, he fell asleep, and Ooh. he died. Uh, but then that reminds me of, uh, of the sons of Issachar, who yes. the Bible says they, 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 were, they were diligent, yes. and they knew the times. Yes, They could study the times. So uh-huh. we, we should be like the sons of Issachar, who understand the times of our generation, so that when we are... It, the Bible is very clear about what, what it means by understanding the times. They understood what their nation and their generation Ooh and their communities mm. needed at the time exactly what they needed. Mm. So we are positioned in the marketplace because mm. we are the people that are supposed to have the know-how, the understanding, and the wisdom mm. to know what our generation needs. We are to save our purpose in our generation mm. correctly by being positioned. This is why Christians cannot shun away from political positions. Come on. Christians cannot shun away from teaching positions. You cannot shun away. You mm. have to be in embedded in every it's ridiculous i'm gonna say this might be controversial to some people here here is a complaint people make oh these um, people in authority or in power they're just so wicked they make wicked laws they're corrupt they do all these things Uh, and then you turn around and you say oh christians you're not supposed to be involved in this you're a hypocrite because you just contradicted yourself yes you can't say oh all these uh, politicians or whoever I just use an example. They are bad and they're doing all these things. But then you stop good men good and men. women yes. from going into those places of exactly. power. Exactly. But you expect bad men, evil men, sinful men, corrupt men, messed up men to make the right decisions. You're a hypocrite or you're mm. insane. There's something wrong with you. Yes. A, a good man is going to make good decisions. A bad man will make bad decisions. So if you only have bad principles in schools, uh, bad headmasters or whatever, if I say uh, yes. if that's a plural, plural. We're going to have bad principles in schools and schools are going to re- be run terribly because exactly. these are the only people in authority. Mm. But if you bring in God's children in the marketplace, my goodness me, Come on. we can begin to clean this up. We exactly. can begin to change the law. Yes. We can. Many people make noise, man of God. Mm. I, I'm coming from a society where there's all this going on, for instance, about Black Lives Matter and yes. all this is going on. Yes. This is not the only issue that people complain about. Right here, people could be complaining about but inflation, poverty, yes, yes. or the, 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 the currency is weak and all that. There are certain things that need to be done in order for these things to change. And the only people who can change these things are the people that have the power to change the law. Wow. 
And not only do they have power to change the law, they are also the same people who enforce the same law. Mm. And so the prayer is not even that God would save the surface, which are just the symptoms. The prayer should be that God should deal with the root cause, which is changing the people, the key people that are in charge of principle making. And that is where we need to get involved in the marketplace, sir. You have touched something very important that uh, I want us to look at critically. Yes, sir. You, you are talking about um, mm. uh, wrong people, bad people Absolutely. in, in uh, positions of power. Yes, yes. And then we are, of course, we are saying uh, they are bad people and uh, we don't, we are holding back the good people who are Christians. Mm -hmm, That's right. We shouldn't get involved in that. Mm -hmm. Here is my other concern. Yes, sir. Let's look at our country's Zambia, for, for, for example. Yes, by Zambia, all means. Next year, we are going yes. to the pause. Yes. So then the question we are asking is, mm-hmm. as believers, yes. what are we funding? Because mm. um, every election is funded by someone. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And if we do not fund righteousness, yes, absolutely. the wicked people will they fund will wickedness. Prosper. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So as we approach this matter, mm-hmm. my question is twofold. Yes, sir. Do we have the conviction within us? Mm-hmm. That's first one. Do we have the conviction within us yes. that we, we, we need to put a righteous person in position. Yeah. Uh-huh. Number two, mm-hmm. do we have the resources yes, sir. to fund? Because again, mm. the reason why God prospers us yes. is that we may fund so his we can kingdom. Be a blessing. Yes, because right. we can push someone into mm-hmm. the political position that's right. without giving them the money. Mm-hmm. So how are they going to prosper? So you need to empower them. Yes, those sir. two things. Mm-hmm. Are we convinced that we need a righteous person? Yes, sir. Are we also able, do we have the capacity to fund them? That's a very good question. So obviously, uh, in this world that we live in, money answers all things. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, when it comes to governments and things like that, obviously, it's a big thing. Yes. And it is not even about, um, I mean, I, I can borrow uh, Barack Obama as an example uh, of uh, funding. Yes. Um, he raised the most. In fact, I don't think there is any other American president who's raised more money in fundraising in terms of a campaign than he did. Mm. But it wasn't through wealthy individual yes. donors. Yes. It was a collection of many people that chipped in. So $10 here, $100 here. It was about the number of people mm. who gave. There were a lot of them who gave little, little together. And then they, he raised more than any other president. Right. Well, as all the other presidents relied on big millionaires and billionaires mm. to give big checks. Right. But he still, he still raised more. Mm. So I suppose in that sense, whoever it is that God would have placed upon anybody's heart to do that, if you're really uh, convinced that this is who God is placing on your heart, you have to get involved and participate and sponsor that. Exactly. Uh, which, and it doesn't have to be the biggest amount. It's about the number of the small number amounts of put small. together. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so you don't have to wait until you have a lot of money to become a sponsor of change in any society. Mm. And then obviously the um, the other part of the question was to do with, uh, if you just remind me a little bit. Yes. Um, I think we are still struggling mm. with the fact that yeah. a Christian can maybe get involved in okay. uh, public policy or politics. That one, to be honest with you, w- with Christianity, I think it needs to be cleaned up. Yes. Uh, because I think for a long time, uh, we have had the wrong conception with regards of uh, uh, government. Uh, I'll try to not use the word politics. I'll use the word government. government. And so in government or governance, uh, a lot of people get it wrong because they don't read the Bible. Mm. Uh, find me any man or woman who is against Christians being involved in governance Mm -hmm. and running the country and let them come to me with not two, just one scripture Mm -hmm. that tells them that a Christian is not supposed to be involved in governance. Just one, not Mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. They will never find one. Yes. It doesn't exist. Yes. But then come to me and I'll show you an innumerable number of scriptures that show you that Christians are the ones who should be running the country. Right, right. Because right from the start, who was responsible for running 
God would choose a leader. Yes. God would put an anointed man in place. David himself that we're talking about was anointed by God, put in place. The judges anointed by God, put in place all throughout his world. And when there was a terrible leader, God would turn his back against them. Read your history in the mm. Bible and bad things would happen until they repent, they bring in a God-fearing leader, then God would begin to bless them again. Nobody will ever give you a scripture that supports uh, an absence of believers in government as God's will. There is, I challenge you watching me, bring me just one verse just one. that tells you that God-fearing people shouldn't be involved in governance. Just one. Just but I will show you hundreds that show that God's children should run every country. And because that is how God designed Yes. And, and you look throughout every time. By the time Josiah, who was eight years old, became king, there was an evil king before him who had fallen away from God. Everything was in trouble until a man of God came to power. Then God blessed them. Every time there was a bad leader, it was chaotic until they repented. A good leader came on, then God blessed them. And that is why the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Mm. The person leading you has spiritual authority over that nation. And so if their allegiance is not to God, you all fall under that same curse. Mm. And that's the reality of it. Yes. It's like when you're a father of a house and you have you carry a certain thing, everybody falls under that until Jesus sets them free from that mm. curse. Mm. And so it's a very simple, straightforward answer, except it has been misunderstood for too long that it has become the truth. Oh, Christians are not supposed to get involved. Who told you that? Who lied to you like that? With scripture, let them show you just mm. one. I'm challenging. Just one. Just one. It doesn't exist. That's why I'm asking for one, because it doesn't exist. It's like me saying to you, if you can guess my middle name, I'll give you a million dollars. I don't care because I don't have a middle name. So I know you will say it, you'll never find it. <laughs> so it's the same way I can tell you. Find me one scripture that tells you that we believers are not meant to be get involved in offices and high places of authority. Come and show it to me. It doesn't exist. Wow. Master yes, David, mm -hmm. um, I think we need to face this reality. Yes, sir. Uh, with all the truth it deserves. Yes, sir. So now we, we, are, we are coming from this background. We are saying mm. believers are not supposed to be involved in the governance and stuff like that. Yes, sir. We are convinced about that. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed, especially in this country, yes, sir. once we elect um, people who govern us, mm -hmm. then we go to knock at their doors. Mm. We are saying we want to pray for you. Yes. And then we are expecting them to give us something. Yes. When in the actual sense, <laughs> we were supposed to be in those offices. Right. So exactly. then we begin to depend on the same people. Mm. So where, where is our confusion? Mm. Because what we have is, um, we, 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 we have now turned yes, sir. to those people. Mm -hmm. Especially the clergy, I'm sorry to say this. No, the no, clergy, go for it. Yes, sir. The clergy mm -hmm. in this country yes, sir. are dependent mm. on these political leaders. Wow, okay. they, they receive brown envelopes, they do what... Mm. In fact, it's so shameful that even during campaigns, they are used. They right, are given yeah. something and right. stuff like that. Now, okay. my question is, which agenda are they mm. pushing for? Okay. Which agenda? So, where have we missed it. Where, have, where is the confusion? I think in the first place, uh, the, the best place to start Managari is the fact that um, what we discussed uh, well, a while back on one of your programs, yes. which is the fact that um, the church needs to prosper. Yes. If I am prosperous in my own regard, then I won't be needing anybody to do that to me. Exactly. Your values become compromised when you are um, when you're desperate. Yes. So when you're desperate for finances, then you mm. become compromised. Yes. And you will support even that which you don't actually believe in, just so you can yes. eat. Yes. Well, as when you are prosperous in your own right, nobody can really buy you. Put it that way. Mm. <laughs> um, and you will be able to. And there's nothing wrong with endorsing a politician. Nothing wrong. As long as the values you are endorsing are right. Correct, exactly, yes. and they're right values. Yes. But don't endorse a corrupt and wrong and evil values just so you can get uh, something in return. That is an evil thing in itself. Mm. And uh, you're not even helping yourself. This is the generation where we only think about what we can eat now. 
just yes. us. We don't think about our children. Because mm. every time we do this, we're killing the next generation. Yes. We need to think about the next generation every time we support anything that is disadvantaging our children and our children's children. Mm. And just because we can eat today doesn't mean tomorrow's generation is going to be able to eat because we've just damaged it. Right. So there's nothing wrong with endorsing it, man. If, <laughs> if you, man of God, were to stand and you were standing on the right principle, I'll, by all means, I will endorse you and support you. That's how it but should if, be. Exactly. If your principles are messed up, I should be strong enough and have enough integrity to say, no, I cannot support this. Regardless of how much I've got. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be a question. In fact, in the first place, there shouldn't be any money, ch changing of money in, in the first place in such a thing. Mm. It's a value issue. Mm. It's, a, it's a moral issue. It's nothing to do with an exchange of funds. The money should be uh, 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 sent towards campaign and other things like that, not towards uh, oiling people's uh, palms so that they can sponsor you. Know, Talking about values, man of God, mm. it, it's part of uh, the marketplace because yes, when sir. we lose touch with our values, mm -hmm. then we lose our credibility, yes, we sir. lose even focus while we are in the marketplace. Now, what we have is, mm -hmm. especially us who are leading, yes, sir. we we lead for many reasons. Some yeah. of us lead because we want to have mm -hmm. uh, uh, a living out yes, of sir. that. Mm -hmm. We are leading because uh, of uh, the, the the noise of the stomach. Yeah. We are leading <laughs> like for that. various reasons. Yes, and so sir. values are not even a, an issue. No, no, not at all. Not yeah. an issue. Mm -hmm. Now, just think about me. If I am a pastor, probably yes, of, uh, let me say, 500 people. Yes, sir. And then I have no values. Mm. What do you expect my 500 members to be? Yes, sir. And so when we send mm. these people into the marketplace, mm -hmm. we are not achieving anything because no. they have no values. Absolutely. So one of the things I think we need to emphasize mm. is the importance of value. Next on Green Room Matters. The greatest hallmark of a good leader is somebody who can raise up other people after him who can do what he does. Mm. So some of the reason why um, the church, most of the church is broke is because we don't want to work. The most spiritual nations in the world who preach Jesus so much until the cows cry hallelujah. I agree before you finish the, the statement. the poorest nations in the world. 